Hello, I'm Alexander and today we're taking a look at the brand new FIO KA17 portable USB deck and headphone amplifier. I would like to thank FIO for sending me the KA17 for the purpose of this review. As always, the review is unbiased and all thoughts and expressions in this review are my own. KA17 comes in a small carton box. In the box we have FIO KA17 deck and amplifier, USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C to USB-A adapter, a full leather case, warranty card and a quick start guide. As an older iPhone model user, I personally miss the Lightning to USB-C cable, but as Lightning slowly becomes obsolete, I understand this decision. The body of this deck amp is made from aluminum and it feels very solid. Plus, its matte finish not only looks good, but also resists fingerprints. K17 comes in two colors, blue and black. The sample in my review is black. The dimensions are 64 by 27 by 12 mm and the unit weights 33 grams. The metal casing gives K17 the sturdiness and the ability to shield the device from external electromagnetic interference. If you want to take additional steps to protect your device, the full letter case is included in the package. Well done, Fear. On the front side of the unit there is a 0.91 inch display that gives you a clear idea on what is happening inside the device, including the USB mode, sample rate, gain level and volume level. On the top of the unit there is a USB-C socket, second independent power socket that is supplying additional juice to the desktop mode is located on the side of the dongle and is red. On the bottom of the dongle there is a 4.4mm balanced and 3.5mm single-ended output. On another side of the unit we have volume buttons, a menu button and desktop mode switch. The build quality is great, with the attention to every detail. The parts fit together perfectly, the buttons and switches feel great, nothing is loose and all the connectors are sturdy. The unit feels solid and I'm very pleased with the build, product design and choice of materials. Now let's talk about technical specifications. For the full list of technical specifications you can refer to the official FIO website. But I will discuss the important technical aspects that separate K17 from the variety of other dongle decks on the market today. The KS17 is based on two flagship ESS ES9069Q chips and I was surprised to see it in a dongle deck, especially at this price point. K17 has also a second independent power socket that you can use to provide additional juice to the device, maximizing the dongle output capabilities. Equipped with THX AAA78 Plus amplifiers, K17 is capable of providing 140 mW at 32 ohms for the single-ended output and 650 mW of power at 32 ohms for the balanced output. And these figures are absolutely mind-blowing, leaving the competition behind. Another important aspect is that the device does have a 10-band parametric equalizer, making it a game-changer for users that always want to fine-tune their IEMs and headphones. In addition, FIO decided to use separate digital and analog boards to reduce unnecessary crosstalk. Add here multi-stage audio circuit, 16-core XMOS XU316 processor and 3-stage power supply and it becomes clear there is a lot of engineering behind this device and I appreciate it. Now let's talk about functionality. K17 can decode PCM768 kHz at 32 bits, DSD512 and MQA. I tested it with my old and trusty Samsung Galaxy S10 that runs Android 12, iPhone 12 Pro Max running iOS 18 and also with my iBaseO DX170 DEP and my PC. I used flag and DSD files and for lossless streaming I was using Apple Music and Tidal. The menu system is really simple and intuitive. To access the menu you need to long press the menu button and adjust the settings using volume buttons. In the menu you can scroll through gain selection, you have high and low gain selection, 
Also filter selection, the unit has eight built-in digital filters. Then you can choose between volume steps of 60 or 120. You can also enable or disable digital output. You can adjust channel balance, display brightness. You can select EQ presets so the unit can have seven EQ presets plus three custom EQ profiles. You can set the volume limit if you would like. Also, you can rotate display 180 degrees. In addition, you can set the display auto off after inactivity, so you can set the timer. And finally, you can select between two USB modes, two languages. You can also check the firmware version. And the last option is the recovery, which is indeed a factory reset. With my Android phone, I based so DAP and PC, I was able to use desktop mode without connecting a second power supply. This means if your device can provide sufficient power, you don't need additional power supply. But keep in mind that desktop mode will drain your source battery faster. With the iPhone 12 Pro Max, on the other hand, the desktop mode doesn't turn on until you connect a second power supply. In addition, without a second power supply on iPhone, I was unable to go beyond 46 out of the 60 volume level. Connecting KA17 via camera adapter also didn't solve the issue. But this is related to the power limitation of the iPhone and iOS and has nothing to do with KA17. So in my case with iPhone 12 Pro Max, a power bank was absolutely necessary when I wanted to push the dongle to its limits. And by the way, Fio also has released a tiny power bank for KA17 it's called Fio E-Stick, which has a capacity of 1100 mAh. It comes at $15 and for the price it's a no-brainer, especially if you're an iPhone user. Now let's talk about Fio K17 pairings and my sound impressions. First of all, I need to mention that I don't believe that DeX can have a significant impact on the sound. However, the amplifier section of the DeX amp or dongle can still introduce some changes to the sound. To me, K17 sounds neutral, refined, very resolving and punchy. According to the specs, the maximum output power is 140 mW at 32 ohms for the single-ended output and up to 650 mW at 32 ohms for the balanced output in desktop mode. With all IEMs in my tests, I have run the unit in the low gain mode and I rarely increase the volume past 35 out of 60. So I will say that KA17 can easily drive all of the IEMs on the market today. I tested it with many IEMs ranging from 12 to 60 ohms of impedance and the results have been great. I also decided to test it with IO Volare, which has a very low impedance, only 4.7 ohms. And I was pleased with the results, as I did not even need to engage a high gain mode, and reached my comfortable levels of volume in the low gain mode. The test was also interesting because the technical specifications of K17 say that preferred headphone impedance ranges from 8 to 300 ohms. So it was good to see it handled low impedance IEM with great authority. In my tests, I also didn't notice any audible distortion or noise with sensitive IEMs, which was good. The K17 has a solid black background and this is exactly what you should expect from a quality deck and headphone amplifier. Next, I switched to the full-size headphones. First, I tried it with full-size headphones that are rated below 64 ohms of impedance and I had no problems driving all of them. So to make the tests a bit more challenging, I tested K17 with 300 ohm Sennheiser HD6XX, Sivga SV023, also a demanding AKG K612 Pro rated at 120 ohms, and Hi-Fi Man Ananda Nano, which has relatively low impedance but needs a good voltage to open up and shine. K17 has driven 6XX and SV023 and Ananda Nano in high gain mode with authority via single ended output. With all three headphones, I reached my preferred levels of volume and I still had some headroom left, so I neither needed to engage the desktop mode nor use a balanced cables. With a single ended K612 Pro, in high gain mode and quiet recordings, I had almost no headroom left. 
but additional power from desktop mode was exactly what I missed and this helped K612 to open up and shine. This is the type of headphone that I never expected to use with a dongle, but here we are and K17 surprised me in this regard. All in all, this dongle has shown great results in my tests and has driven all my full-size headphones with an authority. In addition, it paired especially well with warm and neutral warm sounding IEMs and headphones. I also did not bother using the balanced cables as the 3.5mm output in high gain mode and high gain desktop mode had enough power and headroom to drive all headphones and IEMs in my tests. However, if I need even more power and headroom, I can always use a 4.4mm balance connection with headphones that support it. Pros, an excellent design, build and choice of materials, a desktop level performance in your pocket, very good and tactile controls, dual flagship ESS ES9069Q deck chips, THX AAA78 Plus amplifiers, a second power socket, built-in display, digital output if you need it, there's enough power to drive many demanding full-size headphones, let alone the IEMs, great resolution, fast transients, impressive staging and dynamics. Also a parametric EQ and a fantastic value for the money. Cons? Well, I don't think K17 has any real cons. But I personally would like to see a compatible iOS application in the future and a more user-friendly application for Android. But that's a mere nothing. In my opinion, the K17 is an ideal companion for the headphones and IEMs up to 300 ohms. To me, it strikes the perfect balance between price, performance and output power, and it definitely raised the bar on the market. With all the features and flexibility it brings to the table, I think it's an amazing portable deck and headphone amplifier that you can also use in desktop scenario anytime you need, and I can easily recommend it. And that concludes my review for today. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for future updates. Thank you for joining me and until next time, goodbye.